Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Chef and Secret Ingredients from the Code Chef February 2019 Long Challenge. The problem states, Chef recently visited Chair Chat Cafe and was highly impressed by the food. Being a food enthusiast, he decided to inquire about the ingredients of each dish. There are N dishes represented by strings S1 to SN. Each ingredient used for making dishes in Chair Chat Cafe is represented by a lowercase English letter. For each valid I, the ingredients used to make dish I correspond to characters in the string SI. Note that ingredients may be used multiple times. A special ingredient is an ingredient which is present in each dish at least once. Chef wants to know the number of special ingredients in Share Chat Cafe. Since Chef is too busy with work, can you help him? And the constraints for this problem is that uh, T, the number of test cases, will, between, will be between 1 and 1,000. N, the number of dishes, will be between 1 and 1,000 as well. Uh, S, the length of S, is going to be between 1 and 200. And... Uh, the dishes are only going to contain lowercase letters, and we're told that the sum of the length of all strings over all test cases is going to be less than 3.5 million. So let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So here are our examples. We have two test cases, each of them containing three dishes. And for the first example, uh, the output of the number of special ingredients is going to be two because we have two ingredients, B and C, uh, that occur at least once in each of our dishes. So you can see B here, B here, and B here, C here, C here, and C here. But none of the other ingredients, A, D, or G, occur in each of the dishes. And for our second test case, uh, we have zero special ingredients, as shown below, because none of the ingredients are common across every single one of the dishes. So this problem is pretty straightforward to understand. Um, it only gets interesting when we start to uh, look at how to solve it, because brute forcing this problem is not going to work due to the constraints of the problem. So if we look at those again, uh, they are here. And if we were to brute force this, this would involve going through each test case and for each letter, um, checking to see if it occurs in every single string. So the time complexity that we would end up with would be T test cases time N strings uh, times uh, S, the number of characters in each of our strings, uh, times 26 by the number of letters. So if we break that down, it looks like this. 10 to the 3 for T, 10 to the 3 for N, 2 times 10 to the 2 for the letters in S, and 2.6 times 10 to the 1 for the number of letters in the alphabet 26. And if we multiply these all up, we get uh, 5.2 times 10 to the 9. And if you've watched this uh, these videos regularly, you'll know that the rule of thumb is that we get 10, point, or 10 to the 8 operations uh, per second for the problem. So we can see that this will clearly time out. Um, note though that the problem says that the sum of the length of strings over all of the test cases is guaranteed to be less than 3.5 times 10 to the 7. Uh, so we can replace t times n times s, uh, which are the first three components, uh, by 3.5 times 10 to the 7th. Um, but that still, although it does reduce our total number, is going to be greater than 10 to the 8. And if you actually go and take a look at the details of the problem, we don't have a full second for this uh, problem. We actually only have half a second, which means that we don't have 10 to the 8. We have 5 times 10 to the 7. Um, and at this point, it should become pretty clear what we need to do uh, in order to get this problem to pass. They have set the constraints so that... Uh, it's only going to pass if we get rid of this element here. And we do that, uh, if we do that, we end up with uh, 3.5 times 10 to the 7 just being less than 5 times 10 to the 7th, which uh, given the time limit of this problem and our 10 to the 8 rule of thumb uh, just meets what we're looking for. Um, so if you sort of take a look at this, uh, the, the details in terms of the constraints and uh, the time limit almost tell us exactly what the time complexity is that they're looking for. Uh, and this number here, 3.5 times 10 to the 7. So we know that um, the first line here, 26 times uh, t times n times s, uh, is not going to be uh, good enough. We need to get rid of the 26. And typically, when it comes to time complexity, they say coefficients doesn't matter. Um, but that's just in, in general when talking about time complexity. In this problem, it does matter. Um, so instead of just brute forcing it, the trick is that for each string, instead of looping through it for every single character, we are just going to store a sort of Boolean vector or uh, an array of Booleans 
where uh, one represents that character existing at least once, and a zero represents that character not existing. And we're going to create sort of a temporary Boolean vector for each string, and then we're going to have a cumulative uh, Boolean vector across all of our uh, dishes. And uh, each time we construct one, we're just going to do a plus equals, and then at the very end, we can just count how many um, uh, dishes or ingredients um, have a count of n, the number of dishes that we have. So I guess actually the uh, Boolean vector is only for each of the dishes. The other vector that is across the dishes is sort of going to be a count vector that's going to store the count of the number of ingredients that show up per dish. Uh, so hopefully this will be pretty clear when we look at the code. So let's hop, hop over to that. So here is our C++ solution. You can see I have some macros defined here at the top just for making it a little bit more concise when looping through our data structures here. And we're reading in t test cases, and then we have a while loop for each test case. We read in n the number of dishes. We load them into our vector of strings ds, which stands for dishes. Um, and we do that on the next line. And then we uh, declare our vector of integers, which is going to keep track of the count of our ingredients across all of our dishes. And then for each dish, in our dishes, we have a range based for loop. Note that I'm pretty sure I didn't test that it would fail without this const reference, but without the const reference, we'd be doing a copy, which could lead this solution to timing out. So my guess is that you need this. Um, we have declared our vector of integers t, which is going to be our sort of inner Boolean vector per dish. And then for each uh, ingredient in our dish, we are going to do uh, an equals one on the element of our uh, boolean vector t so that we've marked it that um, the corresponding ingredient does exist in this current dish and we're just subtracting a to, to convert our character into an integer so the minus character a is a, a little trick to do that and then once we have gone through each of the ingredients in our dish in other words each of the characters in our string we then do a plus equals of the ones and zeros in our boolean vector to uh, our sort of our final count vector v. And once we finish this range based for loop, uh, all we have to do is count the number of times we find the number n, which is the number of dishes we have in our count vector v, and output that uh, as our answer. So hopefully this made sense. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which we delved into quite a bit before, uh, which is big O of t times n times s. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.